Last week, I made a post in my YouTube community tab asking you if you still had any questions about the Cypher system even after watching all of my videos that I've done on the Cypher system. This resulted in some very interesting questions and because it is still my intention to teach the Cypher system to as many people as possible, I'm here to answer your questions. Hi there fellow roleplayers and game masters, my name is Mr. Tarask and this is still your go-to YouTube channel on the Cypher system and today I want to answer your questions about the Cypher system because of me asking the question that if you had any questions about the Cypher system. Now I also want to invite you to ask any questions about the Cypher system in the comments below if there's still stuff that you need more clarity about because if necessary I will do an episode 2 of this. Also this video will have timestamps so if there is a subject that interests you or you need more clarity about hit that timestamp. Now. The first question that I have for you comes from a longtime supporter of the channel and personal friend Frederick. He asked this question in my Discord actually. Cypher system rule question. If we have this creature, a cat for of level 1 with a speed defense as level 3 due to size and quickness. Does that mean that attacking the cat, attacking the cat is a level 3 action or is defending from the cat a level 3 action? Now the answer to this is pretty simple, but it actually spawned an entire conversation after that so one of the weaknesses of the cypher system as a system is um, to my opinion is uh, monster stat blocks it is not really easy uh, at first, as a game master, to understand monster stat block uh, blocks because it says things like the cat has a speed defense of level three, but a game master, the person who controls the cat, never rolls for a speed defense roll. So in your head, that might not make sense that it has a speed defense of level three, which is a nine to hit. So the short answer is, if you attack this cat it is going to be a level 3 action, so you have to roll a 9 in order to be able to hit this cat. Now, the confusion here is why does it say speed defense roll? And um, I can go into a lot of stuff here about that, but basically, um, if you are a character, you roll a speed defense roll against almost any physical atta uh, attack that doesn't state otherwise. So a physical attack from a sword, from an axe, from bow and arrow, from a gun, from a freaking tank shooting your way, it is a speed defense roll 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. You get your damage from your might pool but the defense roll comes from your speed right so the cat has a speed defense the only thing that that means is that if you attack it with any physical means that doesn't state otherwise you are going to be rolling a level 3 speed attack roll because the cat has a speed defense of level 3 your physical attacks are a difficulty level 3 attack roll Hope that makes sense. The following question is all about Edge in the Cypher system. And this one comes from Kureishinobi. And they ask, no matter how many times I get over the rules, I cannot seem to wrap my head around these things. First of all, how do you get edges? How do you increase your edge amounts? Is there a max to the number of edges you can get? And if you get five edges, does that mean that tasks can automatically be moved down by two steps? Yes to the last one, but let me explain. So first of all, how do you get edges? Well, basically it's very simple. You get your edge when you create your character. You get a certain amount of edges. You get a certain amount of um, um, stat pull points to your uh, might, speed, and intellect. Uh, say you get like 10, 10, 12 or something like that. But you also get a starting amount of edges, meaning that um, every pool spending activity you do, so every time you do something that costs you something from a pool, you can use your edge to lower that cost. That is basically how edge works. Now, how do you increase your edge amount? Well, the main way to increase your edge amount is very simple. It is through the ad uh, advancement tab right here. I have a video on player advancement that explains this more, but if you spend four experience points, you can do one of these things, right? And one of these things says move toward perfection, which says uh, plus one to the edge of your choice, which is basically what it says. So um, if you hit that tab, you can uh, get one more edge in either speed, in either might, or in 
intellect, further decreasing the amount that it costs to do those tasks. So basically, if you have one edge in speed, but then you do that thing to get an extra edge in speed, now everything that costs you two edge of speed is basically free for you to do. Is there a max of, uh, uh, to the number of edges you can get? I do not think so. Uh, I tried looking that up, but I don't think there is a max number of edges you can take in one thing. Uh, of course, it is kind of about min-maxing or balancing it out. Some people like to put all of their edge in like one thing and really shine in that one department, but suck in the other thing, which is perfectly fine to do. Other people really uh, like more of like the balanced approach, and I think the Cypher system is really good to kind of like find your way and how to do that while you are advancing. Advancing. You don't necessarily have to have a plan up front uh, because nothing is set in stone. You can really like see, oh, I need I need speed more than I thought I, I, I would. So I'm going to put one more edge in speed because I don't have a lot of speed points and I don't want to be getting more speed point necessarily. So if I make it cheaper to, to do speed tasks, um, I will uh, have more speed points in the end of the at the end of the road. Right. So the uh, last question, if you get five edges, does that mean the tasks I can automatically be moved down by two steps yes it means exactly that so normally putting in effort you have a might task let's say you have a might task of climbing wall right you have to climb a wall and it's a might task uh, of level five it's, it's not really difficult it's not really easy it's a level five task right which is normally a 15 to roll you can spend three uh, might points in order to bring that down by one level um, meaning that it now becomes a difficulty four task but if you have Three edge, it will cost you nothing, meaning that every might action automatically has a level of effort. Using two level of levels of effort in your might normally costs five of your might pool. If you have five edge, it costs you nothing. If you have three edge, it only costs you two edge. That's how simple it is. It is only that simple. And people often have a have a lot of difficulty to wrap their head around how simple it is. And it is so simple that it's sometimes even difficult to explain. Quickly as a reminder, if you want to spend two levels of effort, make sure to, that you have an effort level of two because your effort level dictates how many levels of effort you can use for one particular action. The next question comes from a person who goes by the name of Hello here. Hello. Hello, hello here. Do you have some one shots or short adventures you would recommend to learn the game? Well, I don't have a particular one. There is no particular one shot or adventure that I might say it is perfect to learn the game. And that is because almost every book for the Cypher system by Montico Games has some adventures, uh, some really short adventures, some middle long adventures in there um, that can teach you the game. But the best thing you can do is pick your genre that you want to play and then look for an adventure in that genre book. For example, if you want to play superheroes, you can get uh, Claim the, 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 the Claim the Sky is the superhero book and that has starting adventures in there. If you want to play early, early 1900s horror, go get yourself Old Gods of Appalachia and there's, I think, three starting adventures in there for that setting for that genre. So although there's no particular adventures, shorter adventures for you to learn the cypher system you should really look at the genre you want to play and then look in the books of those genres for particular adventures to play but this seems like the perfect opportunity to plug my own adventure, Isle of the Dreaded Curse, for the Cypher system. Pick it up in the link description below. You can pick that one up. It is a longer a fantasy horror slash adventure. Well, basically, it's Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition in the Cypher system adventure. And it is great and it is awesome. And I wrote it together with JVC Perry. Go and get it. The next one is about magic items, or in other words, artifacts. Milieu games... <laughs> <laughs> These names are okay. Can you go over how artifacts work? What are the levels for, e.g. level D6 plus 3, if it doesn't have something specific listed in the artifact? Well, it is very pretty damn easy. Artifacts are basically Cypher System's way of doing magic items. Uh, everything that has any special 
potential every, every item that has every any special potential is basically a cipher in the cipher system but a generic normal cipher is a one use or x amount of uses thing that you use once for a special thing like i don't know a ball that you throw and then explodes like a grenade or something like that that is basically a cipher now magic items in like the fantasy sense are are called artifacts in the cipher system now basically if you i don't know if you have a sword that says whenever you roll a natural 20 when attacking with this sword you gain two might points to your might pool i'm just making this stuff up on the fly right that could be an artifact because it is a sword and you can keep on using it now you roll a d6 plus 3 let's say you roll a 4 uh, that means that the sword itself is a level 4 item that doesn't really mean anything in a sense that it doesn't do extra damage or it doesn't have extra stuff going on what that basically means is that if somebody would use an action in order to try to hit that sword or or destroy the sword or do damage to the sword it becomes a level four uh, difficulty task basically a 12 to a roll and that's it. That's what the level is for if the magic item doesn't state anything else. There are magic items, for example, there is a, a magic item that spawns a stone tower, like a watchtower. And it says, like, the tower is X amount of feet per level. So then when you roll for the level of the magic item, it actually does something in, in terms of math and in terms of statistics for the magic item. But if it doesn't say so in the text itself, the level is purely for any time you're doing anything with the magic item item or against the magic item and you need a number to hit. This one is another very interesting one. It comes from Sean Scott. The thing that I have ha had a hard time wrapping my head around is running high tier play. Challenging players at tiers 1 and tiers 2 is simple and engaging and I can easily tune on the fly. My players are already getting fairly powerful though and every very soon enemies lower than levels 4 or 5 will be absolutely useless against them. With stacking abilities, edges, effort levels and ciphers routinely letting them bring rolls down down by two to four difficulty levels do you have any advice or information on counter building for tiers four to six i know the game from the game that we all came from also has issues with high level play so we're all used to sticking with low level games and starting new campaigns once it gets wonky but my players are very much enjoying both cypher and the campaign we're playing and i imagine they'll want to see these characters up to tier six i think this is a very interesting question and actually, it is the basis for me to do an entire video on the Cypher system on high-level play. But the thing is, I haven't experienced uh, much high tier play myself as a game master yet. That said, there's a few things that I can already say. Now, my party now, uh, the last people are just hitting the second tier, but some of the other people in my party, there's five players in my party, have hit to second tier pretty quickly because they did some good resource management with their experience points so yes some are already feeling quite powerful but with any tabletop rpg any any out there fifth edition whatever you're playing i can only say that you need to embrace it and by that i mean is for example especially with the cypher system if you have a um i don't know a level three creature against a player who has enough effort to autom uh, enough edge to automatically hit those creatures you need to embrace it and i kind of compare this with um the cave troll scene in the first lord of the rings film in the fellowship of the ring where uh, sean bean is like they have a cave troll and then this cave troll comes in with a bunch of uh orcs right <laughs> All of the experienced fighters in the room, Gimli, Legolas, uh, Aragorn, uh, Boromir, um, whoever, they, they all almost automatically hit every single uh, orc. When they try to hit an orc, they'll hit that orc, right? Because they're experienced fighters. So what the game master did in that scene, in a sense, is a bunch of orcs to make the characters feel that they are powerful that they are good fighters that they are sufficient and then a cave troll which is harder for them to hit and they're going to need to spend effort and the cave troll is going to hit them and the cave troll is going to dam do damage against them but on the other hand the uh, orcs are still there so in a cypher system uh, if that was in the cypher system since it is a one action game uh, the players during their action they can choose to just automatically like 
get rid of one orc that might otherwise damage one of their co-players or do stuff like push a boulder in, in, against your players or something like that or try to hit the, the cave troll so they could automatically kill an orc or maybe potentially miss the cave troll but also potentially doing damage to the cave troll which who is the main the main uh, enemy, the main source of attention at that point in that scene. So in that sense, I think uh, um, <clears throat> kind of embracing it in that way. There's also that scene where uh, Gimli and Legolas come up to like a bunch of orcs and Gimli just throws his axe and this orc just flies, the, this orc just flies backwards. Uh, yes, I'm comparing a lot with Lord of the Rings uh, because it just makes sense. This is the same thing. Gimli doesn't have to think about it. He doesn't have to aim he just runs he has his main axe in one hand and he has a small axe in the other hand he's just like orc bomb and he just hits the orc because it's just so damn easy for him and then all of the other orcs come and he just hits one here he just hits one there and every now and then an orc hits him as well but most of the time they don't and most of the time they hit the orcs that is how i run the somewhat higher tiers of play i'm not afraid of putting weak enemies in front of my player characters because the player player characters are strong enough to just kill them not every encounter needs to be a challenging encounter not every encounter needs to be there to completely destroy the player character some encounters um it's like hordes of zombie if you are playing fifth edition and you are level seven and a horde of 20 zombies comes at you uh chances are you're just going to completely destroy them by using one spell why right? oh, you fireball and just, they all explode you need that in your game use that in your game because that is where the players are working towards if they never get those easier encounters they there's no use in player progression in the game tabletop tussle you guys, seriously, tabletop tussle. So I'm currently doing a deep dive into learning the cipher system and I'm really enjoying it so far. I have two questions for you in regards of the cipher system. When introducing the cipher, the, the cipher system to people who have tabletop RPG experience with fifth edition, would you suggest doing a one to four session mini campaign at higher level so the players can experience more variety or just start at first level and level up each session through milestone format? This is an interesting question. I won't, I wouldn't do any of the above. Um, I'm gonna explain. So I think you should never introduce people to a new tabletop RPG by playing the higher tiers of play. Even the cipher system is pretty simple, but even then you shouldn't do it. People should be able to feel that low tier play and build their character towards the higher tiers of play. Now, that said, what I do, something that I do for people who come from 5th edition um, is I have them build a character or I give them a pre-written character if they're lazy and then um, I have them choose one more power from either their type or their flavor or whatever uh, that they get as an extra. It might be a, a, a passive power, it might be an active power, I don't care, they get one extra power just to give them that little bit of extra stuff to do at the first uh, uh, tiers of the game. But I think the game should be experienced at lower levels and the new stuff needs to com come in gradually to really appreciate uh, a game, a tabletop RPG. And I think if you introduce your players uh, uh, into the cipher system uh, at tier 3 or tier 4, they will be overwhelmed because there is edge, there is effort, there is skills that are completely open and you can make up, make them up on the fly, there, are, there is... Uh, yeah, there's just there's all kinds of abilities. Some are uh, some make you do stuff immediately. Some on, some are enabler abilities. There's so much stuff going on with like also the ciphers and the magic items that I think starting them at level three or four, tier three or four, I don't think that is a, a good idea personally. The start it's like fifth edition. If I get a TPK in fifth edition, I'll start at level one, maybe at level three if they're really experienced at that game. But otherwise, we'll start at first level again and there's fun in that there's a lot of fun to be had at the lower tiers of play to my personal opinion would you just su su suggest setting wise for the mini campaign 
uh, pre-written adventure. Yeah, my adventure. Again, plugging my adventure. Isle of the Dreaded Accursed. Type it in in Google. There is a cipher, cipher system version on drive for rpg No, otherwise, um, any genre you want to play, any book has, almost any book has pre-written short adventures to do that. But again, I personally would suggest starting at tier one maybe with one or two extra powers maybe with an extra skill maybe with an extra flaw i also tell people my new players that um they have their skill list right but then i tell them like if you want an extra skill you can take an extra skill but you also need to take a flaw so uh a weakness so maybe your character is really good at swimming but really bad at climbing i'm just saying something so you need to balance that out but giving them an extra skill giving them an extra flaw giving them an extra power might work for you uh at the lower tiers of play but do not go all the way up to tier two tier three uh for that uh that's my personal opinion what's the third party content story for cypher do they have an orc an ogl cc type of srd asks david Rempel for 862. The short answer, yes, they have an SRD. They have some kind of like agreement that you put in your book that uh, they are very easy to work with. If you send them an email with questions, they will email you back and they make it make it really easy for a content creator to create third-party content for the Cypher system. They have an SRD that you can fall back on. They have the thing where you can do the thing. Um, I don't want to go into much details, but it's just 100 times easier than any other RPG they're just really yeah they're really easy they have an entire like web page that just explains it and there's basically two ways to do it but uh, yeah short answer yes they do have that last question by Jefferson Romao 4999 how good is it to play superhero games using the Cypher system? I would almost say that the Cypher system is built for superhero games because superhero games tend to be those games where people come up with most random shit on the fly and you as a game master just need to say yes, shout out a number and be cool with it and just make stuff up on the fly. And a Cypher system is perfect for that. I've played a superhero game on Catup's channel, big shout out to Catup, where the game just started with us falling from an airplane. We were falling from an airplane that exploded and there was all kind of stuff in the air with us. There was like a shipping container, there was an old uh, car and all that stuff. So I, in the air, tried to get in the car, which I succeeded in, and then it had no keys and it wasn't running. And so I put my pinky finger in the contact thingy of the car and because I had electrical shooting powers I was like I'm going to try to start the car with my electrical finger I'm gonna finger the car with my electricity or whatever I'm gonna try to start the car so I needed to roll for that I succeeded in that long story short I was able to land the car Indiana Jones in a raft style on the cliff of a mountain and drive away in it basically so yes I would say superhero games are pretty damn good for the cypher system. Also, I actually have a video where I kind of go over the different superhero books that are out there for the cypher system. Check that one out. And the honorable mention goes to Sarah. Hi, Mr. T. I have no questions on the Cypher system, but I will nitpick in the comments of future videos of you slip up edge and effort wrong. Lol. I just can't wait to see your answer as answer everyone's Cypher questions. I love you too. In my first video I did on the Cypher system, I completely screwed up uh, effort and edge. I apologized like a thousand times. And now I just run into it again, thanks to you. No, actually, I think this was a pretty damn uh, funny comment. I deserve that. Um, um, so I just wanted to give you an honorable mention. And thank you for being here. By the way, everybody, thank you so much for these questions. And if you have any more questions uh, about the Cypher system, about the mechanics, about the adventures, about the genres, about whatever that in Cypher system that you have any questions about, I will try to answer them in a next Frequently Asked Questions video. And until next video, bye-bye.